Hey guys, welcome to a new movie review. Today I'm going to be talking about a film that was released as a video on demand release through Warner Brothers. Uh, so this film is available through YouTube, Amazon Prime, almost any streaming service you could imagine outside of Disney Plus, since that's not owned by Warner Brothers at all. Um, this movie is called Scoob. It is an animated reboot of the uh, Scooby-Doo cartoons from the 60s. Um, one thing that Warner Brothers is trying to do with this movie too is possibly introduce us to a shared universe of Hanna-Barbera cartoon characters. Uh, so Scoob is apparently the first in a supposedly shared universe of Hanna-Barbera cartoons. So in this animated reboot just titled Scoob, you guys, uh, which is also the nickname that Shaggy gives Scooby-Doo in the Scooby-Doo cartoons, uh, Scoob is mostly about um, Scooby-Doo and the gang. They meet up with a superhero called Blue Falcon, also from the Hanna-Barbera universe, and um, Blue Falcon needs their help for retrieving these skull relics that this character named Dick Dastardly needs to um, open up this tomb that could potentially endanger the world if he opens it. Um, Dick Dastardly is definitely one of those typical Rocky and Bullwinkle type characters that you would see like from a villain from that show where he you know, twiddles his mustache around and does evil things for the sake of evil things because that's kind of character he is and that kind of thing. He's voiced by Jason Isaacs of the um, Harry Potter universe, by the way. He was Malfoy's dad in those movies. Uh, but in, anyway, in this movie, um, they team up with Blue Falcon. They have to retrieve these skull relics. Um, it turns out Scooby-Doo is a long-distant relative to a dog that Alexander the Great had, and so they kind of need Scooby-Doo to basically stop this supervillain from retrieving these relics and endangering the world. And so Blue Falcon is also the son of the Blue Falcon that we remember from those Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Uh, me in particular, I remember Blue Falcon from Dexter's Laboratory when him and Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory teamed up and they had to save Dino Mutt in that episode and everything like that. So also a Hanna-Barbera property. But anyway, so they have to team up with him. And like I said, he is the, the son of the real Blue Falcon that we remember. So that former Blue Falcon that we remembered from those cartoons from Hanna-Barbera, that Blue Falcon is now retired and now his son is taking his place, who's also calling himself Blue Falcon and not Blue Falcon Jr. or anything like that. So him and now Dino Mutt, and I'm assuming this is the Dino Mutt from earlier since there isn't any kind of a new Dino Mutt that was talked about. Um, they have to retrieve them. They have to make sure Scooby is kind of with them the whole time so that it doesn't endanger themselves either retrieving these relics and so obviously with Dick Dasher they having the ability of having these disguises to get what he wants uh, to be able to be like a close friend to somebody or to be a really um, attractive cop to another scene with Fred and everything like that. Um, it's important that they don't fall into Dick Dastardly's traps or else he will succeed with unleashing this tomb that would benefit him, bring back his old partner, and also endanger the world in the process. So it's important that he does not succeed with his plan. And so throughout the movie they have to take on this case of making sure that Dick Dastardly's plan falls flat and that the world is in a good place and that this tomb does not open up to a dangerous criminal such as Dick Dastardly. But overall, guys, I really enjoyed Scoob a lot. I think it's a very fun film. I think it's a nice throwback to those old Scooby-Doo cartoons. Um, there's things about it I think they could have done better with. There's certain things about it where going into a Scooby-Doo movie, I'm kind of a little surprised that they went the route that they did. Um, but I understand it is a modern-day audience that they're trying to... to um, appeal this film to. It is a modern day audience that this film is being marketed to, specifically to kids. So not a lot of them are going to know about Blue Falcon and all that kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll get into that more in my negatives. But for my things that I really liked about Scoob, like I said, first and foremost, this is a very fun film. I had a total blast watching this. Not a boring film whatsoever. Um, it really is a film that really focuses on Scooby and Shaggy. So that in and of itself is a very important factor to have in a Scooby-Doo movie, focusing in on Scooby and Shaggy. Um, they have their typical eating lots of snacks habits in this, like they do in all the other incarnations of Scooby-Doo. Um, Fred, Daphne, Velma, all of them are exactly the way you remember them. Um, there's celebrity cameos that happen, like in those newer Scooby-Doo cartoons from the 80s. Um, there's things that you see throughout this that definitely are nods to other Hanna-Barbera properties like Hong Kong Fooey. Um, I think there's a small nod to Johnny Quest at one point. 
uh, a small nod to, you know, uh, Captain Caveman and some other stuff that you might remember from those old, old Hanna-Barbera cartoons. So it's just a very fun film, first and foremost, and I think that's the most important thing you could do in a Scooby-Doo movie. Make the film fun, and that's something that Scoob managed to do. This film also has a great voice cast. We have Zac Efron here, Amanda Seyfried here, Frank Welker, who's voiced hundreds of characters over the years. Uh, we have Gina Rodriguez. We have Simon Cowell in here. We have Tracy Morgan in here. We have a lot of really great voice casts here. Will Forta played um, Shaggy this time around, though Casey Kasem, for me and for everybody else, will kind of always be the real Shaggy for every Scooby-Doo incarnation. Will Forta definitely stepped up here, really gave us another great Shaggy. I thought it was a very great voice cast that they recruited to voice these Scooby-Doo characters. And it is a little ironic that Frank Welker, who once voiced Fred in those old Scooby-Doo cartoons, is now voicing Scooby-Doo. So a very different character for him as far as Scooby-Doo goes after all these years of seeing him play Fred and other incarnations of Scooby-Doo. They also explore Scooby's origin quite a bit here. Uh, they explore how him and Shaggy became friends, how Shaggy really didn't have anybody in his life before Scooby came along. So they explore that a little bit here. They explore how uh, Daphne, Velma, and Fred and all of them, and, and Shaggy and Scooby, of course, all became friends and formed Mystery, Inc. And kind of how that's been started since their childhood. Once again, a nod to a pup named Scooby-Doo. So a lot of Scooby-Doo origin stuff here that I thought was very effective. This also has a nostalgic, classic Scooby-Doo vibe, and that's definitely near the beginning of the film for sure when they kind of do the old Scooby-Doo Where Are You intro in a more modern-day take and everything like that and with CGI technology. Uh, so very nostalgic, very definitely a classic Scooby-Doo vibe that I'm happy that they went with through the entire film. Very happy to see that in this movie. There's also a great intro to that supposedly uh, new Hanna-Barbera shared universe. So if they do continue with this, I am liking what I'm seeing so far. I, I think you could definitely do go back to the BC times with the Flintstones or go into the future with the Jetsons or give Captain Caveman his own story or give Blue Falcon his own story if that all works out or, um, you know, d just do something with another fun Hanna-Barbera property that we all love. I think this is a great way to introduce that if they choose to continue down this path and hopefully introduce us to more Hanna-Barbera related things. I think this could be a fun universe if they choose to do the right things with it. And I do like that this is a modern take on Scooby-Doo. Um, they definitely tried to, um, you know, though it's the same classic clothing and all that kind of stuff, um, they do bring it into a modern age. They do give them smartphones. They do give them apps. They do give them uh, technology you would see in the 2020 era of technology. Um, but they definitely update their clothes in the right way. So Fred's ascot's gone, even though it does kind of have a small cameo in one scene and things like that. Uh, but for the most part, this is a modern day take on Scooby-Doo. And I think they did it the correct way as far as that part is concerned. But for my negatives of Scoob, though, Scoob altogether, though, for one of my negatives, it really did need more mystery elements. Um, unfortunately, if you're looking for a Scooby-Doo movie where they go on this big mystery or take on one of those more traditional mysteries like you saw in the old Scooby-Doo Where Are You cartoons. Unfortunately, this is not the path they go on. Um, it is more uh, teaming up with Blue Falcon, retrieving relics, stopping a supervillain, stopping evil robots. Um, and it's less so going into haunted houses, seeing ghosts, solving a mystery, unmasking a criminal. Um, that part is kind of notched down a little bit more. Um, it's probably in the first half, I would say, you see a little bit more of that than in the second half of the movie. But when they did have mystery elements, I was happy with it. Um, even though I think this film really would have benefited from having a more traditional mystery approach. That's something I'm seeing in a lot of the reviews for this film is a lot of people were hoping for a more traditional Scooby-Doo mystery story. Um, and I think that definitely would have helped this film. I think I would have liked the film a little bit more if they went that route. Uh, but understanding so that they have to update it for a modern day audience and find a way to appeal to more people. I understand why they took the risks that they did, even though at the end of the day, I think a more mystery heavy related story would have benefited this movie. Um, I also would have just liked to have seen mystery Inc, the team themselves having more moments with the team as each other. Um, there's a lot of moments where it's just Scooby and Shaggy going somewhere or Fred and Daphne going somewhere or Daphne, Fred, and Velma going somewhere and finding out about the robots and things like that. Uh, I definitely would have just loved to have seen more moments where it's the entire team working together, really solving a mystery, 
um, really doing the things that we kind of traditionally have known them doing for the past 30, 40 plus years in those old Scooby-Doo cartoons. Uh, so that is one aspect of the film they could have worked on because there is a lot of moments where it's just Scooby and Shaggy, just Fred and Daphne, just Velma and people who are seeing these robots and things like that. Unfortunately, there's not as many team-related moments as I was hoping there was going to be. Um, I also thought the ending of this film felt very easily resolved, and that's really too bad because the film really builds up to this big, Dick Dastardly, putting the world in a lot of danger kind of thing. How are they going to resolve it? And it seems resolved very quickly and very easily, and for being this tomb that Alexander the Great and his dog once made, it seems like a very easy resolution for what they had to do. Um, and it, though at first it's like, oh, I didn't know they have to go do that to solve that. And then obviously like one or two scenes later, it's something where it's like, okay, well, if that's all they had to do, that would have been a much less dramatic scene than the way they made it look. Um, so overall, it's just a very easily resolved ended movie that really kind of didn't felt like it deserved the ending it got just because they kind of skipped around a lot didn't want to come up with something clever to really make this catastrophe end in the right way and things like that. So I thought the ending of this film just felt very easily resolved. It felt like the writers of this film didn't want to put in the extra effort to give it the ending that it probably deserved a little bit more. I also thought the trailer of this film, and this really isn't this film's fault, it's more so in the marketing. Uh, I thought the trailer did give away some of the more funnier moments. There's a lot of scenes here where if I didn't see it in the trailer before seeing the movie, I probably would have enjoyed certain scenes a little bit more. Um, also in the trailer, the whole thing with Scooby and Shaggy in a the theater, uh, hoping like Dwayne Johnson plays Shaggy and stuff like that. None of that is used in this movie. That was strictly done just for the trailers. Um, I think it would have been kind of cool if they kind of threw that in there because it only is a 93-minute runtime, um, And I, I think something to kind of spice it up a little bit more, make it a little bit more fun with that kind of a narrative would have been a little bit more fun for me. Um, so I thought the trailer did give away certain things and kind of misled you to think that Scooby and Shaggy were going to watch this in the, the theater with you and things like that. Um, so certain things in this film were a little misleading as far as that was concerned. So I wish the trailer didn't give away as much as it did. And overall, this is a very short film, and it really only is 93 minutes long. It's really only about the length of three Scooby-Doo episodes combined from the 60s. Um, so I thought by adding maybe a little bit more of a runtime, you could have done more with the characters, could have done more with the Hanna-Barbera thing with making this a shared universe. So for me personally, when you make your film 93 minutes, it doesn't really give your, your film a lot of time to build a shared universe, introduce us to everybody, and do all that kind of stuff. So I thought as a result of being a short runtime, it really kind of cheats itself into something that it was probably trying to do in the long run. But overall, I'm going to give Scoob an 8.5 out of 10. I think it's a very fun film. Um, I'm glad we finally got a film that uh, is new and that I don't have to wait forever for and months away to see in theaters when those eventually reopen and things like that. So 8.5 out of 10 for me. I really liked it. I really hope some other Scooby-Doo fans like it. Do go into this film knowing, though, that this is not a mystery-heavy film. This is definitely more so about Scooby-Doo and those other characters taking on a case, not exactly a Mystery Inc. case. So just go into this film knowing that, because I think some of the negative reviews were basing it off of, oh, well, it's not a traditional mystery. They didn't go that route with this movie. So just go into this movie knowing that that's not the direction they went with. So 8.5 out of 10 for me. Really like this film. Be sure to check this film out on VOD. If you have any streaming service like YouTube, Amazon, or any of those kind of um, streaming services, I recommend Scoob. I thought it was a lot of fun.